From time to time, your sanitary pump requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the Waukesha Cherry Burrell Universal 3 pump with single or double O-ring seals. It is important to note the use of a food-grade lubricant in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the pump and its internal components. Use of other types of lubricant may cause damage to internal components, resulting in a malfunctioning pump. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply lubricant throughout the maintenance process. Remove the cover nuts from the cover. Using a soft hammer, tap the cover off the body studs and dowel pins. To lift the cover on a 210 or 320 size U3 pump, attach an eye bolt to the threaded hole in the cover and attach lifting straps or chains to the eye bolt. Next, remove and inspect the cover gasket. Place the cover on a protected surface with the finished surfaces facing up. Use the rotor blocking tool to keep the rotors from turning when removing the rotor nuts. SPX Flow recommends using a non-marring socket tool for removing and installing the rotor nuts. When working on a rotor, always block the rotor against the body and not against the other rotors as damage may occur. Remove and discard the rotor nut o-rings from each rotor nut. Remove the rotors by hand and place them on a protected surface to prevent damage to these close tolerance parts. Remove the sleeve front o-ring if it is attached to the rotor and discard it. Next, grasp the sleeve and pull it out of the seal housing. Remove and discard the sleeve o-ring if it was not removed previously with the rotor. Repeat this process for the other shaft. Using an o-ring removal tool, remove and discard the front o-ring. If the pump has a double O-ring seal arrangement, use the tool to remove and discard the back O-ring seal. If you are only replacing the seal O-rings, please skip ahead to the seal installation section of the video. The next section demonstrates the complete seal rebuild process. Remove the two body retaining screws. With a soft hammer, Tap the body off the gear case, dowel pins, and body studs. Slide the body straight off the body studs to prevent damaging the mechanical seal parts. For models 130 and higher, use a lifting strap threaded through the ports to remove the body. Place the body on a protected surface with the seals facing up. Next, remove the wave springs from each shaft. Remove the sleeve back o-ring from the groove on the shaft and discard. Next, remove the seal seat from the shaft and inspect. Repeat this process for the second shaft. For illustration purposes, the pump body shown here includes a seal housing for a double O-ring seal located on the right, which contains a flush hole, and a seal housing located on the left for a single O-ring seal that does not include a flush hole. Please note the position of the flush holes when removing the double O-ring housings for proper placement during installation. Once the pump body has been removed, Remove the four retaining bolts from each seal housing and remove the housings. Remove and discard the seal housing O-rings. Lubricate and install the seal housing O-ring. Next, Line up the bolt holes of the O-ring seal housing with the holes in the pump body. For a double O-ring seal, position the housing so the flush holes are located toward the outer edge of the body, not towards the middle. 
Lubricate the threads of the seal housing bolts with a food-grade anti-seize compound and tighten with an Allen wrench to the torque specifications which are found in the manual. Repeat this process for the second seal housing. Install the seal seats onto the shafts by lining up the flats on the seat with the flats on the shaft. Next, lubricate and install new sleeve back O-rings into the grooves on the shafts. Next, install the wave springs onto each shaft. Install the pump body onto the gear case. Confirm that the pump body dowel pins align with the correct size bushings in the gear case. Apply a food grade anti-seize compound to the body retaining screws and hand tighten so the pump body is securely seated against the gear case. Lubricate and install the sleeve front o-ring on the rotors. Next, line up the notch in the o-ring seal sleeves with the pins on the rotors. Press the sleeves into place on the rotors. Next, apply a thin layer of food grade lubricant on the outer edge of the sleeve. Install the unlubricated o-rings into the seal housings. If you have a single o-ring seal arrangement, you will only install one o-ring on each shaft. If you have a double O-ring seal arrangement, you would install two O-rings on each shaft, as demonstrated here. Align the timing spline of the rotor and the pump shaft and push the rotor onto the shaft. Repeat the process for the second rotor. Lubricate and install the rotor nut O-rings onto the rotor nuts. Apply a small amount of food grade anti-seize compound to the shaft threads and install the rotor nuts. Use a non-marring socket with a torque wrench set to the torque value indicated in the manual. Insert the rotor blocking tool to prevent the rotors from turning and tighten each rotor nut. Remove the rotor blocking tool after torquing. Next, lubricate and install the cover gasket into the groove on the pump body. Align the cover holes with the studs on the pump body and install the cover. Apply anti-seize compound to the threads and install the cover nuts by hand. With a torque wrench set to the proper value as found in the manual, tighten the cover nuts in a cross pattern. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX Flow Waukesha Cherry Burrell Universal 3 pump to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order genuine OEM replacement parts or special tools, contact your authorized Waukesha Cherry Burrell sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/wcb for more information.